And our speaker, and I said in the first service, and, and, and I meant it, that when you start church, you have a lot of struggles. First of all, you, you make sure that all the people that are serving with you do something. So I had uh, the LCC, and uh, my LCC Akinadaktari, these are, they came at a, right, at a good time. You know, my LCC then, if you are the elder on duty, it simply meant you are our worship leader. You will lead us in worship. So Kiroko was one of, I know some of you when I told you he was leading my worship, Munauliza, who you? Yeah, Kiroko was one of my You know, I told somebody that Diana was my interpreter and people could not believe it. She was my Swahili interpreter, Diana. Anajua kiswahili kingi kuliko gashuru. Waliishi Mombasa pamoja lakini Diana alikuwa interpreter wangu. So Kiroko used to, to be a worship team until he got to a place he said, Sasa, sitaki hata hiyo. Sasa akabaki interpretation. Akafika pali akasama hata interpretation Sasa, sitaki hiyo. Sasa nataka kuwa tumu ubiri. You know, you go, 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 go. So we bless the name of the Lord for Kiroko coming back home. He is not a visitor. Hata hii mwaka alikuwako. Na amekuja tena. Na hii mwaka tena, labda atakuja tena na tena na tena. Kwa hivyo ni vizuri kujua tuko na ndugu wetu mwingine na kaa Atlanta. Ili tukipita pale tunaweza wamba kikombe ya cha. Lakini amekuja na mke wake. Mke wake na Alice walisoma darasa moja. Miaka ine. Yani form one, form two, form three, form four. Wakachana. Arafu, story now ikaenda tu hivi, kiroko wakaona, elishiba wakaona yeye, mi nikaona mudhoni, nikaona yeye. Yeah? Arafu, tukalande sote zima man, na nikawa pasta wao. These are good people. Walitoa taidi yao, waliniunga mukono, Na, na mali na hali zao zote hebu tumkaribishia tuletee neno mchungaji pastor kamau karumba kiroko hebu tukaribishia hata mke wake aweze kutuletea salamu let's appreciate them until they come over here to the praise and glory of the lord it's good to see you pastor Hallelujah. For the blood. That's how I used to lead worship. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, as I have told you before, and as Bishop has said before, my names are Karumba Kamau Keroko, and I love the Lord Jesus Christ from the days of my youth. And in the days of my youth, the Lord blessed me with Erishiba Mudoni Waweru and she became my wife. And the Lord has blessed us and has given us 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 35 years, and still growing on and doing better and better. And we are young people. I am a young man and the Lord is blessing us. I'll give my wife a time to give a testimony. Uh, welcome. This is home. Praise the Lord. Let me give you permission to sit. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I am happy to be back home again and I bless the name of the Lord for being in your midst. Uh, we are a testimony that uh, people can get married and remain friends. We are more of friends than anything else. God has blessed us with a daughter and two sons. And now we are grandparents of four boys, and more is coming. One thing that the Lord has 
uh, continued to remind me. And I thank God for the word of God because the Bible says, man shall not live by blood alone. But by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. And I'm so happy I'm a child of God. That is the word of God. The word of God has made me a child of God. God, by believing the word of God, by believing God, I am a child of God. And so I have chosen over the years to live by the word of God. Even when I see like blood, is, there is little blood, I have decided I will trust in God but not bread. Bwana sifuwe. And then the Bible tells me that Jesus Christ is the bread of life. Bwana sifuwe. So I have chosen to believe the word of God. And I am, when the Bible tells me I am blessed, I choose to believe that. We are all blessed. I want to tell you this morning that you are blessed. Amen. You are blessed Amen. beyond measures. Praise God. Amen. The blessings of God make it rich and add death no sorrow. So it is for you to choose this morning where you want to belong. If the word of God calls you, calls you a child of God, a heir of the kingdom, my sister, you better believe because that is who you are. A word that I want to share with you, believe free, in Psalms 91, and verse 14, I'm not the preacher, the preacher is here, and I want to really hear the word of God because I am blessed through this man of God. Because he is lovingly devoted to me, I will deliver him, I will exalt him, because he knows my name. When he calls out to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and, I, and give him honor. I will satisfy him, even with long life, and show him my salvation. I don't know where you are. I don't know the state you are in, but that is the word of God. The Bible says you are a child of God, and because you are devoted to him, that's a challenge to all of us to ask ourselves, where are we? What is status are you in today? Because the Bible says, because you are devoted to God, he will deliver you, he will exhort you. Praise the Lord. That is the word of God. Live by it. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, dear. God bless you. Uh, that is my wife. Our sons will be joining us in the, in the third service. And we are here to bless and glorify the name of the Lord for his goodness to us. And every time we come to this altar, we are very indebted and grateful to Bishop Kimani and Pastor Alice because we have been friends since the days of our youth. And even now when we are getting seasoned, although we are still young men of a few years and believing God for more mountains, we are believing God every time we meet, like Joshua and Caleb, that the Lord God we served, when we were taking possession of the land, he has not changed. He's the same God. And even today we are well able to take new territories for God and for the glory of God. This morning we come back to say this, that our God is faithful. And God is so faithful to all of them that trust him and call upon his name. And to confess that blessed is the man who fears the Lord. Who delights greatly in his commandments. That means you are delighting yourself. You are finding pleasure 
in knowing the will of God and seeking the will of God, you are finding pleasure in declaring that Jesus Christ is Lord. You are finding pleasure in, uh, in, in just humbling yourself before God. Because the promises of God are that your descendants will be mighty on the land. And the generation of the upright will be blessed. I am sure we are here because we desire that we will be blessed in our lives and not only ourselves but our generations and our children. And as we pray and believe God for the blessings of our children, even then, as we believe God for them, we want more of God. We want to know more of Him. We want to know what is this that we might do. That we might do the works of righteousness. The things that please God. Because if these are the promises of God. And he further says in the book of Psalms 112 and verse 3. Where the leeches will be in his house. Brethren, whomever said wealth is for the wicked. Is a liar. Because the earth and the fullness thereof belongs to God. The Bible says wealth and leeches will be in the house of the men and women who fears the Lord. And it is our time. It is time for us to believe God for those things that are ours. And when we believe God for those things that are ours, then we will take them. And then the Bible says, Father, and his righteousness endures forever. That means what you did in the days of your youth, what you do in the days of your middle age, and what you do when you are in your season life, that all those things, the decisions you made, the choices you made, they will stand the test of time. And your children will live to see and call you blessed because you have walked the, the walk, you have walked the talk. Why? Because God is, unto, is with you. And to the righteous, there will lies dull, light in darkness. To the righteous, to the people that fear God, that in darkness there will appear light. Because darkness surely comes at one time or another in people's lives. You are walking a very smooth path. You are walking in perfect health. And you go to a doctor. And they say you have a disease. And you, are, you find yourself in a crisis. But the Bible says even in that darkness, that light will shine and deliverance will come because you have set your heart to trust and believe in God. The Bible Father says, a good man deals graciously and lets he will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting and remembrance. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of evil things. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Can you imagine somebody who in the midst of adversity says, I know my God lives. I know he will deliver me. I know I'm unfix, but I am uh, the one who unfixes things lives inside of me. And so I cannot be defeated. Brethren, this morning, I want to share with you the word of the Lord that has put in my heart. The word I, in my introduction has come from Psalms 112. And you can use that one as, as your prayer. If you want to pray scripturally, open Psalms 112 and claim those promises for you. You claim for your current life. You claim them for your children. You claim them for your needs. And you go before the Lord. As I was reading these passages and the promises of God. And the promises that were further said by Jesus Christ. And the teachings that Jesus Christ gave us. I asked myself, Lord, what is happening? Because I desire to see more of you manifested in the lives of the believers. In my family, in the church, I want to see you manifested. In our nation, I want to see you. I want to see your act clearly shown and manifested. What is happening in us? And then I opened the scriptures in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 6 from verse 1 to 18. And the Lord began to speak to me that there are some things that we do in life 
that we are selective runners. We read the scriptures and we say, that one is not for me, that one is not for me, that one is not for me. The other day I pulled one of my books in the library. And I opened that book and it is a, a theological piece about the miracles of Jesus Christ. And the author, a celebrated scholar of a major denomination, said miracles no longer happen. And said not only miracles, not only do miracles happen, but you and I are not called into fasting because Jesus finished it all on the cross. And I come to tell you, brethren, that we are living in the times of the Spirit. And I want to challenge each one of us, at the end of this service, to challenge each one of us that we may have our pillars straight and well-founded. The three pillars that Jesus taught in the book of Matthew. The external things that you do so that they may change and build the internal person. That all that you have, you can use it for your current needs. Sometimes back, it snowed in Atlanta, Georgia. And very early in the morning, my wife was going to work. And because for me that day, I was in charge of my own schedule, she decided I can drive her to work. And it was my joy because the road looked lisky. And so we went and uh, as we drove in her dream car, a Nissan Pathfinder, we went and as we went up a hill, our car started hydroplaning and dancing on the road. Before long, the car had gone to the wrong side of the road and was facing directly to the oncoming traffic. And our life was in danger. Before I realized, she was already speaking in tongues. Because as she spoke in tongues, and the car here is dancing, and I'm trying to control it. It left the other side of the road, and our vehicles are coming head on. And we saw death coming very close. But thanks be to God that the angels of the Lord held the car just before it went down a cliff. Whatever stopped the car, we did not understand. And so the emergency vehicles came to rescue us. Because the cars that were coming downhill, the opposite side, wrong side of the road, they would try to stop and they would also be skidding. Very risky situation. At that point, a policeman came and asked me, sir, what is the problem? By this time I'm shaking and my wife is in tongues and my hands are on the, on the steering wheel. Then thereafter, the policeman looked at my car. It's a four-wheel drive car. And said, engage your car on a four-wheel drive. And you'll be out of this scenario. I asked him, this car has a four-wheel mechanism? He said, may I come in? Yes, you may. So he went in and get the four-wheel drive and the car drove like it was on dry ground. Put it back on the right side of the road and he told me you can drive this car anywhere in the rain, in snow, and you can be very comfortable, you'll be helping other people. From that time, people started calling me whenever they, had help, they needed help after my testimony. It's likely, my brother, my sister, the Lord has given you your dream passion. The Lord has given you a dream and a vision for your life. The Lord has given you a family. The Lord has given you a business. 
but it is stalling because you do not understand and you are not aware about the potential that you have been given. The moment that you said, yes, Lord. And so you are struggling. But the Lord would want you to get out of that struggle by discovering the secret. One, you must be a giver. That means you are a giver even as Christ gave. And because you are a giver, that means you are not selfish. You do not hold yourself back. You offer your body as a living sacrifice. Offering is giving. You are giving your body and mind and faculties unto the Lord as a living sacrifice. Jesus said when you give, even your arms, that is your face, your, your, your wealth, to help the needs, of, the needs of the poor in Matthew chapter 6. I would like us to go there very fast. Take heed that you do not do your charities be, deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise you have no reward from your father in heaven. When I was reading this passage uh, of Matthew chapter 6 from verse 1 to verse 18 I came across the word reward so many times. It is like a new definition of God was coming to your life, to my life. And uh, there is a worship leader here who, who led us in a song about God who gives. Muheani, Mpeachi, our God who visits you and gives you. And it is like God is in the business of giving. But he says, in order for him to give, there are some things that you need to do yourself as a person. And he says when you give arms, when you give acts of charity, do not do them as unto men, because your father who knows you in secret and your deeds, that he will reward you. And then after giving, comes to prayer. And we all know how the disciples asked Jesus Christ, Master, teach us how to pray. Because we have seen when you pray, things happen. You spend all night in the mountain alone and pray. And after you pray, you come and pray for the sick. And miracles happen. And then he told them, pray this prayer after me. Our Father who art in heaven, every one of you knows that prayer. And it's a good prayer. Whenever you, you feel you want to pray and you do not have things to pray for, may the Lord open your eyes that you pray that prayer. Even if you pray it 365 times or 60 times in an hour, the Lord will open your eyes. But then what I want to share with you today is about the sacred power of fasting. Because Jesus also instructed the disciples and said in, 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 in verse 16, Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the, the hypocrite with a sand countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you pray, but you, when you pray, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting but to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in the secret will reward you openly christian fasting is not optional it is mandated by the lord jesus christ for all of us people fast all over the world other faiths fast fast but the people that appear to be taking fasting so casually in my perspective, they are the churches. They are the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. They are men and women that do not believe in the Bible, in the whole of it, because they are selective. And it is my prayer that, that none of us chooses to believe certain passages of the scriptures and the other they say no. Because then they have no reward. Hear the passage that we have just read. Jesus Christ says, when you fast, that means fasting is mandatory. When you fast, pray and do not do it like the hypocrites. Do not do it like the rest of the world. 
in our community, in our churches today, we have a problem of desiring to be like other people. We even bring the world into the church and into the pulpit. Because we want to appear like them so that we can appeal to them. But Jesus says, when you are a believer, your style of doing things is different. And don't fear, friend, friends, to be different. Because Jesus says, don't fear to be different. Be different. Don't be like the world. Even the call in, in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, it says, do not be conformed. Do not fit into the mold of the world. Be different from the world. He says now about fasting. Do not fast like the world do. But in fasting, anoint your head with oil. Continue with your day-to-day -day businesses. When people invite you, even to the restaurant, and if you have a business meeting, go to the business meeting, but when you go to the business meeting, ask for water. Or a cup of juice, even though the others might be enjoying a buffet. For the sake of the gospel, because there is something greater you are seeking. Jesus said, when you fast, pray like this, do like this. And why do we fast? We fast because in you there is a spirit of man. The Bible says in Proverbs 20 and verse 27. That there is a spirit inside man. And it is a spirit. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord. Searching the depths of, of his heart. That means you are a spirit being. You are not body. You are not flesh and blood. You are a spirit being. And your power is in the spirit being. You are determination in the spirit being. You are exploits are in the spirit being. Because the Bible says in the book of John chapter 4 and verse 25. That Jesus Christ, for this purpose Jesus Christ came. To seek that those who will worship the Lord God in spirit and in truth. And because he came to seek those who worship God in spirit and in truth. The people that worship God in spirit and in truth are the people that nurture their spirit and they connect with God. By disciplining their bodies and saying, I want to have access to my body. I want to have access to that spirit inside of me. Because the world is evil. When we talk about evil in the world, we mean a manifestation of the work of evil spirits that use human beings, that even use animals, that even use elements of nature like the wind and the trees. And when they use those ones, we see the manifestation of evil in the world. In order for you to be able to fight them, you must be a man that is given to pr to prayer and fasting and when you pray and fast that means you are bombarding you are entering the enemy territory you are entering the spiritual world and when you enter the spiritual world you are fighting those battles that are not carnal that are not physical but they are spiritual and your weapons are mighty to the pulling down of those powers in the book of Matthew Chapter 3 from verse 13 to 17. We see Jesus Christ going for baptism by John the Baptist. And when he is baptized, the Bible says even Jesus Christ himself was affirmed by God as his son. And said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And even though Jesus was affirmed by God, he still needed to pray and fast. And he needed to pray and fast because of the mission and the work that he was to accomplish. And that is your calling and that is my calling. 
if we want to accomplish the great things that God has ordained for us. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. That you and I are the craftsmen. We are crafted by God. And God thought about us even before the foundation of the world. And when he thought about us, there is an assignment that God has for you. And that assignment needs a strong foundation. A strong for a spiritual foundation. And that spiritual foundation is the spiritual discipline of fasting. And how do you fast? The Bible says Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. I know that is a tall order for the Christian community to do. I know of men and women that have gone for 40 days of prayer and fasting. In whatever mood, they can do it. From 6 to 6 p.m., they say, I am not taking bread or wine or bread or drinks I am only going to take water or juice during that time and when after they have prayed and fasted great things happen I, I, I mentioned in the morning that sometimes back when the Lord spoke to me about going to the United States of America for study during that time and I went to the American embassy. And they said no first time. No that time. No for the time. Except you go alone. Without your family. And I remembered my brother Moses the other day. Had spoken to Falau. That I am not going alone. We are going. All of us. Including our hooves. And I remembered that scripture. And I said I don't want a visa for myself. I need it for my family. Then they said no. I told my wife we need to go to the prayer mountain and pray. We went there and fasted for three days. And after praying and fasting for three days. We agreed with her as we, go, we went. Do not speak to me when we are there. I will not also speak to you. When I see you coming this way. I will go this way. I want to be a stranger to you. When we are here. And after three days we agreed, write down what the Lord has spoken to you. And I will write it down. If our notes agree, then we will march on. But we will not talk to one another until you have written down, you have written down. And when the Lord had said, by those notes he said he had given us those visas. After three days of prayer and fasting, the Lord opened the door for us. That has been very, very difficult. A mountain to climb. What am I saying, brethren? I am saying that there is a power inside of you. There is a secret weapon. And I want you to start using it. And that is a secret weapon of fasting. Because when you use it, your enemy does not know your strategies. He is oblivious. He does not know what is happening in the spiritual world. Until you speak it out, he does not know about it. But when you pray and fast, God will see you through. Jesus prayed for 40 days and that is without food. Friends, let me tell you something. The reason why the world is in chaos and why we lost the kingdom in the Garden of Eden the sin, the great sin that denied us the presence of God from our birth, from cradle to the grave and behold, is because of Mr. Central Province. Because of the desire for food, the Bible says when the serpent came and offered the fruit, that the woman looked at it and said, It is good for food. And pleasing to the eyes. And so when you say no to food. For the sake of the gospel. For the sake of your children. I am telling you the Lord will honor you. The Lord will hear your cry. And then in praying and fasting. When you are doing that. And you are saying your body. You are not going to rule me. You are not going to take control over me. I am in charge. 
I'm in charge of my life because you are not in the body. And you are not going to succumb to the temptations and the lust of the flesh to sabotage the purposes of God for your life. You are going to say no. Any professional here knows that before you get that certificate as a professional, before you get registered as an engineer, before you qualify as a doctor, before you qualify as a CPA, you must know how to burn the midnight oil. So that even as after you qualify, and audits will be calling on you, and patients will be calling on you, you can arise any time of the night, and you can do the work. In, in our church and in the Christian community, it's like we have become casual Christians. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, casual Christian no more. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, casual Christian no more. I am doing exploits for God. When you pray and fast, you have a way of doing exploits for God. Because there is a war that usually happens inside of you. And it is the war against flesh and the spirit. Very well clearly stated in the book of Galatians chapter 5 from verse 16. That the war, the, the fruits of the flesh are known. And the fruits of the spirit are known. But how do you nurture that spirit? You nurture that spirit by prayer and fasting. I remember one time I was praying in the mountain. And as I was praying, I was praying because we had a financial crisis. Our daughter needed to go to school. And she was not being registered. And as I prayed and fasted, I, the Lord told me, get out of here. So I got out of a retreat, a prayer retreat center we call the land. And when I got out, I put on my suit. I love them, these things. I put on my suit, got my briefcase, and went into a mall and into a place called Walmart. A big shop where they sell almost everything. And as I was going in, I found a man who looked at me and said, Hey, man of God. Hey, man of God. We greeted one another. I did not know him. Even today, I don't know him. And we exchanged cards. In a few days, he calls me and tells me, Pastor, pray for me. I prayed for him. Then he said, what can I pray for you about? I told him about my daughter who, has, who is in college and he has not registered for school fees. He asked me, how much is that? I said, $12,000. After prayer and fasting, somebody came and asked me, how much is that? $12,000. Said, Pastor, give me the name of the school and the bazaar and your daughter's name and I'll call them right away and we'll sort that one out. Let me tell you, friends, that very same day, that man sent a check of $4,000 towards that bill. A man that I did not know. How he, he knew me, I did not understand. But I am sharing with you these things about prayer and fasting that it became, that it might become your lifestyle. When you have challenges, go to the Lord in prayer and fasting. Declare a fast in your family. What about children? In the time of, in the, in the book of Second Chronicles, Chapter, chapter, chapter 20 and verse 14. Jehoshaphat called a prayer and he prayed with the children. They fasted. Children and women and everybody in the land. And God gave them victory over five kings. Over five kings. The Lord gave them victory in the land. Why? Because they prayed and fasted and believed God. Brethren, when you are seeking God and you are feeling your life is threatened, the best thing is to pray and seek God. For your protection. When you are facing a crisis like Esther, you pray and believe God. When you are facing protection and insecurity like Ezra, you pray for God's security. When you are sick, 
When there is a stubborn sickness in your family, pray and fast and believe God for healing. Because he's a good God. Let us rise up. Our Father and our God, we bless you. I want you to lift up your hands and believe God that if you have not been fasting, that the Lord will turn your life around and you become a man of prayer and fasting. That there is nothing impossible with God. That when you call upon the name of the Lord, that he will come in your situation. Because he has come in my situation many times. He has come in the situation of the patriarchs and matriarchs in the scriptures. People that said no to the Mr. Stomach. People who said no to the appetites of their body. That they may seek the face of the Lord. Probably you are here in our midst and you have never prayed or fast. You have never fasted. You have been praying. I want to invite you further and higher and higher because that is the place the Lord is calling us. Where the generals are made. Where the mighty men are formed and functioned for the army of the Lord that is going to bring a slaughter to the enemy territory in Jesus' name. What is it that has been disturbing your family? What is this that has been lacking your businesses? The Lord is giving you victory. But he's calling you to a time of determined fast, of determined denial that the Lord may move in your life. Probably you are in our midst and you are sick. The Lord wants to touch you and heal you. I have prayed and fasted for you. And I believe that today is your day of deliverance in Jesus' name. Wherever you are, I want you to raise up your hand. Wherever you are and you are sick, I want you to raise your hand because I have prayed and fasted for you. And I want the Lord to manifest himself in your life. I want you to make a quick move to the front. I want to, to make a quick move to the front. And those that are uh, in the up there, I want you to get to your front where the ministers will reach you, wherever you are. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because you, woman, I have prayed for you. You, mother, I have prayed for your children. You, father, I have prayed for your family. I want you to get forward where you are, make a step of faith, and be there. There are men and women that will be praying for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is your time of deliverance. This is your time of healing. This is your time of salvation. And I want to ask the other ministers. I want to ask ministers, pastors, please, let us minister together. I want you to anoint these people with oil. The Bible says, and the sick, the elders will anoint the sick with oil. And the sick shall recover in Jesus' name. I want the elders, the elders, the pastors, please those that are up there please anoint those people with oil in Jesus name and as I extend my hand to you as I believe God together with you I want you to know that today is your day of healing today is your day of deliverance in Jesus name receive your healing today in Jesus name receive your deliverance today in Jesus name the Bible says in the book of in the book of Matthew, chapter 4 from verse 23, that Jesus Christ traveled all Galilee and the Bible says he was healing all their diseases. Whatever disease it is, I want you to know you are healed and you are delivered in Jesus name. You are delivered in Jesus name. I want you to anoint them. I want you to anoint them quickly and pass by. Just anoint them and move on without uh, Yes, 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 yes. Believe God, believe God. Just anoint them, just anoint them. I am praying for you as you, for them as you anoint them with the oil. I am praying for them as you anoint them. Receive your healing, receive your healing, receive your healing in Jesus name. Receive your healing in Jesus name. Receive your healing in Jesus name. This is your day of deliverance. This is your day of healing. This is your day of healing. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance in Jesus name. In Jesus name, in Jesus name, receive your healing, receive your healing, in Jesus name, this is your day, this is your day my sister, this is your day my brother, as you join your faith, as you mingle your faith with the word that you have received today, you have received your healing in Jesus name. 
receive your healing as you get your anointing please go back to your seat as you get your anointing please go back to your seat as you receive your anointing please go back to your seat as you receive your anointing because in Jesus name you are healed whatever manner of sickness you had whatever manner of sickness Jesus our Lord has healed you he is our healer he is Jehovah lover he is the Lord who heals us he has healed your life in Jesus name in Jesus name be thou healed in Jesus name receive your healing receive your healing in Jesus name 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 probably you are in our midst and you are unwell and you have issues in your life that you have struggled with for many years you don't know why there is a drunkard in your family you don't know why there is a drug addict in your family you don't know why there is a sexual addict and predator in your family I want you to lift up your hand wherever you are whatever issue it is I want to tell you our God is able we believe in a mighty God a God who is able Raise, raise up your hands wherever you are raise up your hands wherever you are our father our father and our God your people are lifting their hands because they are dealing with critical and urgent matters Lord I pray that you shall intervene in the name of Jesus Christ intervene in the name of Jesus Christ receive your miracle receive your breakthrough receive your miracle receive your breakthrough in Jesus name in Jesus name I want us to give a mighty shout unto the Lord hallelujah 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 God bless you and walk in your victory in Jesus name you are blessed of the Lord. I love you. I love you in the Lord and God loves you.